Hello everyone, it is Amy with Mama Bear Blue and I am joining you all here today on the Iron Orchid Designs page. And all the products we're using today, um, the Iron Orchid Designs products, you can find from your local stockist by going to ironorchiddesigns.com and looking for your local retailer. Again, I'm excited to be here and show you a little project that I did over the weekend. I thought it turned out really cute and it's really economical. Um, they're dollar store jars. So these, I picked up a few different styles and I'll show you what we're going to transform them into. But this is like a, just a kind of an apothecary type jar. By the way, if you shop at Dollar Tree <laughs> and you're in the United States, it's it's a dollar twenty five now. Has anybody shopped and seen the new prices at Dollar Tree? I think it's kind of funny, but anyway, that's the more of an apothecary type jar that I'm going to be working on. But they have all kinds of cute shapes. If you go on the vase aisle and then like the food storage aisle, these were from the vase aisle. A couple different options for you, and then um, I want to show you what I did. I took some Iron Orca Designs air dry clay and molds, and we transformed this into this I'll give you a little close up there so what I did is I took the trimmings mold this is trimmings one around the top and then these are from the new cameo molds and then with some um, clay based chalk paint and some waxes I was able to transform these into some really cute little touches of spring and then of course just a little bouquet of flowers from the grocery store <laughs> so anyway I thought they were pretty cute and I just thought maybe I'd pop on here and show you guys how I how I did that. Um, I'll show you one other one I found yesterday at Dollar Tree and just whipped this one up this afternoon. Um, I used the frames mold and then some decoupage paper in the center of that and I think it just turned out really cute with some some copper and um, yeah I don't know cute. Alright so the first step and I've kind of stepped this out a little bit because there is some drying time involved that you're going to want to do probably overnight um, and letting your molds after you glue them on kind of letting them set up. Let's just hop into it. So you're going to take your glass jar and you're going to put um, a coat of um, your favorite clay based chalk paint. Okay so this one, um, so so far I've done one in kind of a bluish one and then one that I've stepped out for you guys I'm going to do in white. But this one I just, I really just want to do in a soft pink. So I'm going to take my um, clay based chalk paint here and just put a light coat of paint right on the glass. And you don't need to go super thick because you're actually going to end up doing three coats of paint in total. If you want to let yours dry on its own, that's probably best. But I, and for the sake of my lives, I like to use a heat gun. And I get all the way up here to the edge as well. Even though that um, you're going to have some molds going on here, go ahead and get, get the whole glass covered. We're going to put two coats of this paint on before we glue the molds on and then after the molds have been glued on and set up, that's when we'll put our third coat on which will also paint the molds at the same time. And one of the reasons I do go ahead and paint before I glue my molds on um, is because sometimes with the air dry clay you'll get just a little bit of shrinking, sometimes some cracking, but um, which I love the look of because it looks very vintage but you you do get maybe a little bit of shrinking and so I want if it does shrink you want to you don't want to have that clear glass showing through under the edge if, if that makes sense under the edge of your mold and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit this with the heat gun um, so hopefully it won't be too loud for you guys So I am, um, that's pretty dry, I'm going to go ahead and whenever I'm using my, putting on a second coat of paint on whatever project I'm doing, whether it's furniture painting or crafts, that second coat I just use a really light touch because I don't want to reactivate that paint and cause a bunch of pulling up of that first layer. I am, um, across all social media, I'm Mama Bear Blue. Um, if you get a chance to follow me, that's awesome, I'd appreciate it, including YouTube. and. Um, again, you can look up your local stockist for Iron Orca Designs on the ironorchidesigns.com website. I'm going to dry that. That's my second coat. Give it a good dry. If you do not like the look of brush strokes in your project, you could also, um, I'm just using like a, you know, the brush I use for my crafts and my furniture painting, but you could also use a foam brush and kind of lessen up some of those brush strokes. But what I like about the brush strokes is that when I use the um, wax, the colored waxes and stuff, it'll sit down in those brush strokes and it just looks really pretty. So 
especially if you're trying to add like age to a project. All right, I'm going to set that aside for a second. Um, it's got good coverage. There are a few little spots where I can see the glass showing through. That's okay because this is going to get a third a third coat here after we get the um, after we get the molds glued on. So I'm going to move on towards doing um, the mold, and I'm kind of sticking with the cameos theme. Although I did show you on that one where I used the frames mold, and that was really pretty too. But I'm just thinking there's so many cute spring molds you could use for this like the he loves me mold with all the daisies and flowers like that or the roses mold would look really pretty too so i always store my um air, iron orchid designs air dry clay in the um, in a resealable bag after i have opened it and i'm just breaking off some and warming it up in my hands just a little bit and then i think for this one i'm going to choose um let's see if this late this larger one's going to look I think that's going to be pretty. Actually, I did that one on the white one as well. Um, decisions, decisions. I think, I think I'm just going to go with, let's go with this one. I haven't used this one yet. So I'm going to get my cornstarch and just a little artist brush and brush into the mold I'm planning on using. And I'll, it's like your flour in a cake pan and that makes the air dry clay release a little easier. Okay. So then I <clears throat> press it down into the mold. I usually end up getting a little, way more than I need. So I'll pull off what I don't need and just make sure it's cut, filling the whole mold. Um, and if you guys are familiar with the Iron Orchid Designs mold, they come with a little micro rim around each um, design and it makes it really easy just for you to like take your finger and pull off the clay and it kind of chops it off right there at the edge. You want a fairly flat, um, flat back on the on it because you're going to be gluing it so you do want it to be fairly flat again if you want to use like the um did i get one out here you know the little sticks that come here it is the little sticks that come with the iron orca designs transfers those are nice for kind of helping you level off in the mold or just your thumb so then what i do is i turn it over and then i press and roll up and it rolls right out. I love these little molds. They have so much detail in them. Our next step is to glue it on. And so what we're going to use is my favorite glue and a lot, probably a lot of stockists that you see on here use is Tight Bond Quick and Thick. But any wood glue or glue you're used to using with your craft glue is probably going to be fine. But this is one of my favorites. And so I just turn it over, put it directly onto the clay. And you can definitely do this when the clay is still wet. You don't have to let this image dry. You can also do this with resin. Um, I don't know if you guys have worked with resin in the molds, but it works really well too. But I thought today would I'd be a day when I sh work with the air dry clay. Plus, I like the you know if these crack a little bit, I like that vintagey look, and that's kind of what I'm going for here on these um, bases. So make sure you get it to all the edge because you definitely want your edges sitting down. And then I kind of look on my jar and see if there's seams, and there are in this one. And so I like my seams to be on the side. We're going to place that right on there. Get the glue off my hands. And then I just gently, gently tap so that the whole, th the whole uh, mold is touching the glass. And I just, I'm real gentle because I don't want my finger to press out the pretty image and details. So just be real gentle and then kind of make sure, go around and make sure that you have good adhesion for that whole thing. Okay, so from there, what I like to do is put a little piece of painter's tape on it just so it doesn't slip or move. And ideally, I would let that sit at least a few hours, if not overnight. Put that right on there and I just make sure that it's snug around the edges but again not pushing any, any image out of that clay and then I just I'm going to prop it somewhere where it can just lay just like this and, and I'll be able to start on that one later this evening or tomorrow but I've got one ready to go for the next steps for you guys I did this one last night something I didn't do earlier guys which I'll go back and do is paint the lid but I did on this one because I figure if I end up not wanting to use this as a vase you know it's going to be cute as a jar with its lid on. So um, this is the one I'm ready to uh, work on. This one I did in white. 
so it's ready for its last coat of white paint and I'm just gonna carefully carefully pull this off all right so I'm gonna take my white paint put on the third coat of white now on this um, this clay is it's definitely drier than what I just used because this has had 24 hours to dry but it's not completely done I would say this clay is going to take a few days to completely at least a couple two or three days to completely harden up so I still want to be fairly gentle with my brush when I'm um, painting over these molds because I don't want to mar any of the really pretty detail when I get this third coat on because um, it had two coats last night and it's getting this final one I am going to dry it one more time and then I'm going to do some put some wax on that's really going to bring out some of the detail in these molds and it should look gorgeous. Show you where we're at so far. <clears throat> so we went from the clear glass to this. I think it's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start with clear wax because whenever I am using different colored waxes, I always want to have a base coat of clear on there just to make the colored waxes be a little bit easier to control. Doesn't have to be a super thick coat, just a light coat's fine, but I do make sure I get some on the mold as well. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to move on to another wax now. Let me think about how I want this to look I think I think I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of dark wax because I want this to look aged at least around the molds to give it kind of a bit of a shadow and there's always kind of that little time of a after, after you put your dark wax on where you're a little nervous that you may have ruined your project but you can always wipe it back and you can always use your um, clear wax as kind of like an eraser so it's always going to look kind of yucky before it looks better. And again, that's totally up to you how you want it to look. If you don't, if you want to skip the dark wax and just use some metallic waxes or um, white wax, you can do that. I like to use old soft t-shirts when I'm wiping back my wax. And I want to be really, really careful um, not to mar any of that clay image. So. I'm not done, but I'm going to give you guys a close-up of that. I'll get some dark on the rest of it, too. But see how that just makes those details pop out? Her profile and all that. I just think it's really pretty. I like to work in small sections and then wipe back so it doesn't have too long to sit on there and start drying, making it harder to wipe back and control. All right, so that's where we're at now. You can really see, like, the detail and the profile on that gonna get some gold wax going. I'm gonna hit my high spots um, like the rims of these cameos that have the little you guys see that and really gently with your brush so you don't mess anything up just gonna brush over her profile. Okay I'm gonna wipe it back a little bit but that's where we are so far. You guys can kind of see the shine to that. I think this would be cute too if you use the more um, whimsical mold, the He Loves Me mold with the, the flowers I was talking about earlier, like the daisies. It's just a little bit more whimsical. I think these would be do, fun to do in some really bright colors. A few spots on there, and I'm going to let you guys look. And I like, to, I like to make it a little darker right around where they adhere to the jar. Kind of makes them stand out just a little bit. I don't know. I think I, think I like it. I feel like this... This is the look I was going for. All right. So that's the lid. So what we've ended up with, the one I started out with, and more of a kind of a bluish green. And then, of course, the lid to that one. And the one I showed you with the decoupage, and that's with the frames mold. I made Christmas ornaments the same shape and decoupaged on them and they were a big hit this Christmas. I, that was fun. And then the one we just did, finished up, was that one with this lid. Yeah, paint. There you go. I knew it was there. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was fun, guys. I'm glad you um, tuned in.
to watch me use the Iron Orchid Designs molds and the air dry clay to transform some clear glass jars. Again, dollar, I mean, if you check it out or go to your thrift store, they have all kinds of shapes that look really pretty with molds on them for your for your spring jars. And this is the one I'll finish up. I'll be sure to post some pictures on the page. I know you can't see that one because it's a drying. But yeah, quick and easy transformation for spring, which I'm ready for. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me again. My name's Amy with Mama Bear Blue. It was fun being here today, and I will see you next month. Bye.